posterior sternoclavicular joint dislocation, surgical fixation. This reformatted CT scan shows a posterior dislocation of the left sternoclavicular joint with the medial end of the clavicle displaced posteriorly. The normal mechanism of injury is due to an oblique force to the posterior lateral aspect of the shoulder. This drives the scapula forwards and the medial end of the clavicle is driven posteriorly and also medially. Occasionally this can occur due to a direct anterior force. The stabilising ligaments for the sternoclavicular joint are the anterior sternoclavicular joint ligaments and the posterior ligaments. These can be seen more easily from an axial view. The interclavicular ligaments prevent superior translation and the costoclavicular ligaments again prevent superior translation but are also involved in anterior and posterior instability. Following a posterior dislocation, both the anterior and posterior sternoclavicular joint ligaments are torn and when the joint is reduced they remain torn. The small ends of the ligaments mean that it is not possible to repair these acutely. This coronal MRI scan shows the torn anterior and posterior ligaments with the damage to the costoclavicular ligament. And this axial scan shows escape from the die both anteriorly and posteriorly, confirming a tear to both the anterior and posterior ligaments. To stabilise the joint, it's not possible to repair the torn anterior and posterior ligaments, and I prefer to undertake a reconstruction using a hamstring tendon graft. My preferred configuration is a figure of eight hamstring tendon reconstruction. Two anterior to posterior 3.5mm drill holes are made in the medial end of the clavicle and the sternum. A hamstring tendon allograft is then passed through the superior clavicular ligament from anterior to posterior. It's retrieved and then passed through the superior sternal drill hole from posterior to anterior. The tendon is then passed back through the inferior clavicular hole from anterior to posterior. It is then passed through the inferior sternal drill hole from posterior to anterior. Having passed the tendon through the drill holes, the ends of the tendon are then pulled together. This reduces the joint. The joint is then cycled and the tendons tensioned. The tendon ends are then sutured together. This is the final figure of eight configuration. This post-optive CT scan shows the joint has been reduced and we can just see one of the arms of the tendon passing from the superior sternal drill hole to the inferior clavicular drill hole. If you would like to learn more about the sternoclavicular joint or any other shoulder conditions, visit my website cambridgeshoulder.co.uk or my YouTube channel Cambridge Shoulder.